coast are afraid of unknown depths, skirting shores thinking world flat, and with the island girls in celebration of new religion. Nobody led me or said this way, I sailed alone on makeshift raft with wind as companion. Fate for deliverance, confidence enough to assess new disposition. Seekers of lost paradise may seem fools to those who never sought the other world. Welcome to Momentary Zen with Zen Garcia. Visit www.fallenangels.tv. You're listening to Revolution Radio. But he that giveth his mind to the law of the Most High and is occupied in the meditation thereof, will seek out the wisdom of all the ancient and be occupied in prophecy. He will keep the sayings of the renowned men, and where subtle parables are, he will be there also. He will seek out the secrets of grave sentences and be conversant in dark parables. He shall serve among great men and appear before princes. He will travel through strange countries, for he hath tried the good and the evil among men. He will give his heart to resort early to the Lord that made him, and will pray before the Most High, and will open his mouth in prayer and make supplication for his sins. Welcome, friends. I'm your host, Zen Garcia. This is Momentary Zen here on Revolution Radio. I thank all of you for taking the time to join us this evening. I'm especially honored to have as guest with me a longtime listener and good friend, Scott Bennell. Scott, are you there, brother? Yes, I'm here, Zen. Can you hear me? I can. And, uh, very good, very good. Yeah, thanks for your willingness to come on a short notice and to absolutely join me this evening for this particular show. We will be speaking about Bible codes and their meaning and also what they represent, especially to our being the future generation. Certainly, I believe and I feel that you also believe that they are part of the spirit of revelation being That's poured right. out upon all flesh and that God through this tool and this particular, uh, these revelations as far as the Bible code is confirming witness to certain topics, certain issues, and also giving us ability to seek out even, um, cause I believe that everything's encoded into the Bible codes. All we have to do is seek it out. And certainly, in my opinion, it represents divine inspiration because nobody but God could have placed it into the word in the manner that is uh, discoverable. Wow. And so you, you do you want to comment on that? Absolutely. Um, you couldn't have said it any better, Zen. Uh, many people wonder why they're, they're there and, and why uh, people um, search them out. And uh, we believe that the Most High has placed them there as a way to reconcile what the surface text is saying. Um, they're, they're not there to divine the future, although the future is there. Because, I mean, let's face it, the future is described in the very surface text of our prophets and in our scriptures altogether. Um, but they're, they're there as a way to, to reconcile the text and to prove that his hand certainly did guide um, the writings, uh, the writers of, of the text. Uh, many people um, who, who don't believe, who are, who are not spiritual, they, they, don't, they think that the, that the Bible and that the, our scriptures were written by just merely by men. Right. And this, this proves beyond a doubt um, not only just by somebody who can reasonably think, <laughs> but somebody who is scientifically minded that indeed that these scriptures are 
they are divinely inspired and that there's a divine hand in them. Yeah, I think that's the thing that sets apart the Bible and shows yes. that it is the revelation of God and why it is that we should look to it for truth and to, you know, gain knowledge because God does reveal the end from the beginning all throughout yes. the prophecies and throughout uh, the Old New Testament and many of the extra biblical books. And so uh, being divinely inspired and 100 percent accurate in prophecy and then now having these deep layers of the Bible code yes. overlaying the Torah. That's I right. mean, I mean, it's undeniable that this is the inspiration of the Most High God upon this text and that the prophets, as it says in, you know, in Second Peter, that they were led by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit to yes. scribe what they did. That's right. And, you know, and also in Daniel, where he's told to seal up the books until the end of time, you know, there's right. a lot of people that have their own um, interpretation of that. And I, I suppose that could that could take on a uh, a multitude of of meanings and significance. Um, but we believe, as researchers and as people who who study these things out uh, and who have hours and hours and hours in this and take it very seriously, like myself, uh, we believe it's very much part of the unsealing of the books. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and there, there's no doubt in my mind. Can you tell us uh, about your involvement in the study and also the yes. group and the individuals sure. that you I'd love to. gather uh, with? Um, well, um, I'm, I'm involved with a uh, code searcher, um, Jonathan Matthew Wright. Uh, for anybody who's interested, uh, who's you know, if, you, if you think – for anybody who's listening, if you think that this is something for you, uh, you can go to codesearcher.com. Uh, he has – a channel on YouTube as well. And even for anybody who wants to learn uh, biblical Hebrew about restoration, restoration of the name, restoration of the calendar, these are things that we hold very closely to our heart and we take very seriously. So this isn't just um, uh, primarily focused on Bible codes. This is just a facet of our research. research. It's, of course, it's it's a very integral I would say it's probably part of the main focus because this is the point, you know, a uh, code searcher. It's, it isn't called code surfer, code searcher just for the fun of it, you know. Um, but it's very important to us to embrace um, a very well-rounded air, uh, ministry. And um, and that's how I came about to, co to code searcher. Um, you know, I was uh, a fan of uh, a fan of the channel and I kind of, Followed along, and it was always kind of just above my head, you know, uh, looking at the screens, and uh, it was it, I couldn't fathom how it worked. And how I came about being into the class was um, I was actually inspired to, to learn a Hebrew. I, for some reason, at a certain point, I felt that it was important for me to 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 go further in, in my walk and. Uh, all of a sudden, I had an interest in the Hebrew, and, and I had heard uh, Dr. Pigeon on one of your broadcasts, actually, and he had uh, he had given the Shema in, he, in Hebrew, and it and it did something to me then, um, very pro something very profound. And I was looking um, online for places to learn Hebrew, to learn biblical Hebrew, and the Tanakh, and. Um, you know, I couldn't find anything reasonable, and uh, lo and behold, I had found out that this is something that Jonathan was offering through his course. So I didn't really, at the time, I didn't really have any interest in in, in doing the codes because it just kind of in, intimidated me because I, I, didn't, I didn't understand the mechanics. So I got in touch with Jonathan and uh, signed up with the course, very reasonable, because it, it is set up like a, a collegiate-level course. Mm -hmm. it, it is not it's not something um that is uh just a, a very simple kind of blah 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 you know you go in and you're learning college level hebrew and and i got in and i got involved i signed up and i i um 
I started doing the codes because uh, it's part of the it is part of the course and it does interest me. And I decided, okay, uh, I'm just I'm going to go forward with this and and see if, if it clicks with me. You know, I was like I said, I was more interested in the Hebrew Hebrew at the time, and I and it became a a, a, a full course meal if you want to you know put it like that. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I got involved with the code searching too, and for, uh, somehow I was just able to adapt uh, pretty quickly. And and it's been a couple of years now, and and you know, here I am. So that's how I got involved. And um, a, a lot is uh, a lot is being revealed. Uh, I'll tell you that much. Um, for anybody who's interested, they, they can go to. Jonathan's channel and see some of the recent uh, uploads because uh, he does upload some of the classes that uh, sessions that we do as, as well as him doing his own um, live feeds which he uploads and uh, we have a, a, a partner channel who's a part of our class uh, Bible Code Theory Research who um, brings a lot of very good content and um, we're so very blessed to have him as part of the class because he brings a lot to the table. He's a, he's a partner researcher and he's a, a very close friend of mine in regard to the guy as a brother. And, and we uh, almost daily, we get together and, and research. Um, and not only are we researching in the codes, we're now researching um, the Aramaic Peshitta and uh, interpretation in the Peshitta and other things as well. So, it's more than just the codes, but the codes are very integral to to our research. So, well, what kind of software are you using? Because uh, I'm sure that has you know has something to do with. Yes, um, the software. There are, are a couple uh, programs that are exclusive to the public. Anybody can get them, and anybody can get a program and reproduce. Um, the codes that that we are doing, um, they are reproducible. There are a couple programs. Uh, one in particular that is uh, exclusive only to people in the class that are at like a higher level of um, that have gone further in the course. Um, it has some other features that are more up to date, is what makes it a little bit different than the others. But there there are a couple out there that that are available to the public. And anybody can get these programs and, and reproduce um, the the um, the results that 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 we get. You know, so it's not like you know. A lot of people say that the codes are, or there are some people. Let me rephrase: there are some people out there that say that the codes are contrived or they're kind of put together. Uh, and it's it's just it's it's not like that. Um, these codes have been preserved in the text for for thousands of years. Then I mean, right? Um, so, which that's yeah. the amazing thing about it is that uh, this information has been encoded into the text yes. thousands of years, and it's only now that we've arrived to the end of the age and have right. computers and the capacity to seek out to have yes. the computer to search out. Um, you know, these equal distant letter sequencing. Um, and can you explain yeah. that as well? How codes are discovered, the basis of, um, yes. yeah, of the technology. I, I sure can. Now, you know, in, in, in recent centuries, in recent past centuries, 17th, 16th century, uh, there, there are, there were people that were doing this by hand and, right. Codes that are found at a shorter skip, 10 letters, 6 letters, 20 letters, anything that you can count on paper that's relatively easy, you can, you can get a Hebrew Tanakh and you, can count, and you can find them there by hand. What the program is allowing you to do is take equidistant letter sequences that are a large skip, hundreds, thousands of letters even, and arrange them in a fashion to where you can visually see them on a screen and do it quickly. Because if you're trying to find a letter sequence, that's let's say 3,126 letters, just to throw something random out there at you. 
it would probably take a long time to to find something like that by hand. Right. You know, uh, as a matter of fact, it would probably take years. And the computer does it at the snap of a finger. Right. Um, um, And the very interesting thing about the computer now, when you think about the ephod and its purpose um, with the high priest, right? Uh, We know that the ephod was used as a way of communication with the Most High in the Holy of Holies. And when the high priest would put on the ephod and, and, and burn the incense inside of the room, as you know, I'm sure you're familiar w- with this then, um, the, the, the light from the, from the fire, right, would, would shine through the, the 12 stones on the ephod and it would, sh- and it would, uh, show letters uh, on the wall and they, and they would get an answer from the most high. And think of, um, the software and the computer as as an ephod as we have an ephod uh available at our hands and and this is what we liken it to and it it makes sense the funny thing is is when you look up the word curious girdle in exodus uh it is the word het shin bet it just so happens that that very word uh translates into computer in the modern hebrew oh, wow. <laughs> it does <laughs> so there's no doubt you know um that this is what this is this is this is basically essentially an ephod you know he although you know modern version huh modern version yes it, it is because uh they they don't not that we not that we know of anyways have an ephod available now i I think with uh rome between rome and your uh uh uh, rabbis over there in 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 israel that are involved in government and 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 um your religious people over there you know i've heard through the grapevine that they've they've got the ephod stones Mm -hmm. um but I, I wouldn't know how true that is. The general public wouldn't know about it, but uh, these are um, apparently things that are lacking um, as far as we know of. Uh, I think they have them, but that's neither here nor there with, as far as the Bible codes. Um, it's just a comparison, and it's a, good, it's a good comparison. So that would be the best way to kind of describe that. We, he's given us the availability outside of the authoritative uh, people um, to be able to uh, commune with him in this fashion, you know. Mm-hmm. So do you guys get this, together once a week or? You saw, or uh, you we said, usually get together twice a week uh, as a regular schedule. And uh, sometimes we do have impromptu meetings um, if we're just so led by the spirit to – to, to get together and, um, as a group and, and and look something over because you know every once in a while one of us will will happen upon some some new information or or a, a new revelation and and we'll notice you know we'll notify each other and hey you know well why don't we get together on this and we'll do so like that but uh, oftentimes uh, throughout the week it's it's twice a week we'll, we'll get together. As a class, depending on discoveries and right, as far as getting together, what you're doing. You know, spur spur of the moment meetings happen randomly, but we do have a regular schedule. It's yeah. we usually get together once uh, on Monday and once on Fridays if it's not Shabbat because we observe um, the Soli lunar calendar. Yes, uh-huh. so if Shabbat happens to fall uh, on a class day, we'll 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 move the class according to Shabbat. Awesome. Awesome. Yes. Very cool. Well, um, before we go into the reason why you contacted Mm -hmm. me, Mm -hmm. uh, if you would, can you share some of the discoveries that y'all have talked about uh, that have been relevant and interesting and you think that would be, um, you know, of interest to the the audience as well? Sure. Uh, First and foremost, the issue of codes. Um, 
to, to us and to me, um, this is most important because, you know, Yeshua said that the whole word testifies unto me, Mm -hmm. you know, and he meant it the whole word. And there are just, when it comes to Yeshua codes, I mean, this is my favorite. Uh, The Yeshua codes are my favorite, Uh, very uh, near and dear to my heart because when I first started uh, code searching at a, at a beginner level, this is what I did. I wasn't interested in doing anything that was prophetic or looking at, you know, some people like to do codes because they want to look for themselves, um, which is perfectly acceptable if it's within a reasonable outline of, you know, uh, of your intent, you know, is your intent, where's your intent? You know, this, if you bring strange fire, um, it's, it's not good. Um, uh, and, and some people, this can, this can be used as a, dev, as a, as a ways and means to divine. And, you know, a large crowd of people already consider it that way anyways, you know, you know what it's like to be burned at the stake mm-hmm. for, oh. for, for, for certain topics. And, and we, <laughs> yeah. you know, you know, we deal with, Better the same than issues. Plus. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, we deal with the same thing uh, from just as a general opinion from, from certain crowds, uh, but this is to be treated with holy hands. And we, uh, so anyways, um, you know, the Yeshua codes, I, this is what I, I did to, and still do, um, uh, more is found. I mean, just when I, I thought I've seen the, the, just the greatest Yeshua code, he'll, he'll show me something else. And, um, he is encoded in the text. Uh, one of the, um, most famous Bible codes that there is, uh, on a, you know, known level worldwide is, um, is, uh, the Yeshua Shmi code, uh, in, okay, in, um, secular King's English, King's English terms, it is Jesus is my name. Um, that is a seven character term in Hebrew, Yeshua Shmi. Um, Yod Shin Bav Ayin. Shin Mem Yod. Uh, you will find that term encoded within just a handful of verses in Isaiah 53. Awesome. Um, this was which found is by extremely relevant. Which, yeah, anybody who knows anything about Messianic prophecy, Isaiah 53 probably stands out as the most regarded Messianic prophecy there is in the Old Testament, which dates back to 750 BC, roughly. Um, and this was discovered by a man by the name of ya- Yaakov Ramsel. And Yaakov, um, he was a Bible coder, and he did it in the old method. He he went through the Tanakh and, and did this by hand. Wow. Um, he was he lived in he did live in a time when this was gaining popularity um, in the community with um, computers and whatnot. Um, the Bible codes was just something else I'll probably t- talk about here in a little bit how it began and everything. Um, these uh, Jewish rabbis and uh, statisticians, geniuses pretty much, guys with degrees, you know, um, mm-hmm. started all this on, and they started doing it on the computer and they made the programs available. The, you know, the, the main proponents of Bible codes. But anyways, Yaakov, um, he, you know, he wasn't like the rest. He, he was, he believed in Yeshua. And this is very important to us. This is probably the most important to us because we are followers of Yeshua. And um, he he was determined to prove in the codes that Yeshua is the Messiah. Absolutely. And and he was the one that was going to step out and and wait and hold the banner for Yeshua. And and he his work <laughs> it makes me tear up. You know. Oh yeah. It it uh. It, 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 comp- it compelled me and it touched my heart. And, oh, um, anyways, this code in Isaiah, um, uh, um, it is so am- amazingly, um, Im- it, it's by, by, by any means, by any, it's, it's just, it's just so impossible that it's there, that it's, you, you just know it's there by purpose because, when the statisticians ran the numbers, when they crunched the numbers uh, on on this code, um, it is 
fifty quadrillion to one that it's there by chance. That you could take a you could take the number fifty and put another fifty zeros behind it, okay? Wow. To one that it's there by chance. Um it it is so minutely the chances of that being there are so minutely small. You could like I said, you could walk out your front door and get struck by lightning every day for a hundred years straight. You would have better chances of that happening than that being there by chance. It, it, it proves that it cannot be there by chance beyond a shadow of a doubt. Um, he's, he's made himself known. Yes. And, um, and he's, he's done so, um, through the codes and, you know, we see proof of that in, in our daily lives in so many other ways, you know, as believers. Um, and uh, that's just one example. And I mean, myself, I have um, I, I've seen some incredible Yeshua codes. I found a few myself. Um, now, if you go to the book of Zechariah, OK, anybody can do this. Um, uh, who's who if if they're if they're at least familiar with the Hebrew alphabet. And know the letters. They can go to Isaiah 53 and count every 20 letters from uh, verse 8. It's between verse 8 and I believe uh, 14 or 15. No, verses 8 through 12. And they can they can find where it starts and they can do it by hand. It's there. It's preserved in the text. That's what I'm saying. It's not contrived. This isn't something that's just stitched together or put together or or built like um, Lincoln Logs. It's there in the text. Um, if The one that I found is in Zechariah 12. Um, they will mourn over the one that they have pierced, right? Yes. Uh, that is, uh, I believe that's uh, chapter 12, verse 10. Or chapter 10, verse 12. I, I may have that backwards. Uh, don't quote me on that directly, but uh, just within that area, at a skip of 45, in, in that part of the text, in the Tanakh, you will find Yeshua, honor my blood, at a skip of 45. And it's talking about the one, they were mourning over the one that they have pierced. I mean, that is so deeply profound. Mm-hmm. Uh, for that to be there, it's, it's just not by my chance, you know. And that's just another example. So... Um, we regard the Yeshua codes as uh, most important for th- for that respect, um, um, because it, this is the gospel, you know, and it and it reflects in the codes. Um, but now that we've covered that, we can, you know, I'm definitely uh, free to talk about uh, other findings that are relevant, you know, to any, you know, prophetic. Um, current events and stuff like that. I just, you know, I wanted to cover that because that is most important. Um, yeah, absolutely. I'll um, bring, I'll make mention that um, the first Bible code book that was written was written by a guy named Michael Drosnan. Drosnan. Yes. 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 And um, mm-hmm. what was amazing uh, about his work and the reason that he got into the Bible codes is uh, he would, they were able to find the names of all of these rabbis, these prophets mm-hmm. within the bible right. codes and they also found the name of what was the then prime minister of israel yes. yitzhak rabin yes and the in connection with that code he also found that it described or in uh, uh, referred that he would be assassinated. Yes. And so yeah. he reached out to Yitzhak Rabin. Mm-hmm. And one of his friends did know the prime minister. He That's gave right. this this warning to him in advance, provided it to him, and he ignored it. And yes. he was assassinated. And so that showed the profundity yes. of the information and um you know also that you really you ignored it at your own peril sure or what could be your own peril so but yeah can you comment on that uh absolutely that is the only recorded uh time uh in bible code research and in history that a predictive code a predictive code came to pass 
Um, when it when it comes to predictive codes, uh, you've really got to be you've got to be anointed for, for that purpose, and you've got to be at a certain par. Um, you know, this is uh, like I said when it comes to the to, to the future. Uh, this is a very delicate matter, and I really. You know, the Most High is going to reveal something to somebody at, at the right time in the right place. Mm-hmm. And that's how it's going to happen. Um, a- anybody can can take a Bible code program and start spinning their own crazy ideas about the future. Um, I myself and Jonathan over at the course have already dealt with this. And it's, and it's it was a problem because it wasn't uh, rooted in... Um, the spirit. It was rooted in somebody's own selfish desire to spin their own crazy ideas. But uh, the the incident with Rabin and that code, that was a clear example of yes, um, it, it is in fact uh, the future is in fact encoded. And if the Most High wants to use somebody to let somebody know something, um, he's going to do so. Um, right. It's it's like I said, dealing when you deal with the future, it's just kind of a delicate situation. But you know, at the right time and at the right place, uh, and if if there's a warning giving given, um, you know that it, it 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 should be taken with some heed. You know, right. Uh, right. And it's it's easy to pick out the ones who are doing it with ill intent, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And and I, myself, uh, I'm dealing with some research right now. That is, uh, it it is prophetic in nature. And I, I have to spend time with my brothers and sisters and I have to spend time with the most high, uh, knowing that what I, what I'm dealing with is, is, is in fact from him. Yeah. And and sorting out the details, you know. Right. Um, but I don't, you know. I mostly try to reconcile uh, events that have taken place uh, already, because this kind of hones a, a person who's uh, dealing with codes and um, moving kind of into a place where. If something is revealed in that way, they can do it and know for sure that, okay, this this is what this is, and I, I'm ready to go ahead and, and perhaps talk about this. And you know, some of the, a lot of this stuff comes in hindsight. And if you're you're looking at something that's got dates and years, it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be right then and there. However, it could mean that it's close. It could mean that it's coming. Um, things appear in the codes that are even talked about or thought about. That's how um, delicate and, and um, sensitive um, the codes are. If it was a thought in somebody's head, if it was something that was written in a newspaper, if it was something that was written in a book, even if it was fictitious, it will appear. So it takes a very um, rigorous um uh, training and a high aptitude to determine um, is this a random anomaly or is this something that doesn't belong on this particular table? Uh, and, and then from there, it would take um, um, dedicated and hard research to, to come to a, a conclusion because you kind of have to get put yourself out of the way and put your opinion out of the way and and look at what's there and and you know in the past when i first began i look back and i and i could see where it was more my opinion than what was being said in the code you know what i mean Mm -hmm. and it's 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 taken some some time um learning and being led by the spirit and coming to a place where i know that okay i've put myself out of the way in this situation Father, please, you know, guide me and, sh- and show me what you would like me to see without right. any preconceived notions at all. 
And it's easy for, for, for some researchers and for some people out there who, who do this to kind of put their own, um, like I said, spin on things. Yeah. So. It's like, uh, you know, for years and years and years, um, many have read the Bible and filtered it through their heliocentric yes. belief system. Mm-hmm. And, you know, like the earth hanging upon nothing um, and interpret it in that manner. But when you understand the truth and then review it again, then uh, clarity comes to. And so the, you know, the way that we filtered it was incorrect, but the truth was encoded into the word the entire time. You know, just like with my decryption of the book of Enoch, um, and the book on the courses of the heavenly luminaries by. Yes, which I have. It to biblical cosmology. And so, you know, that knowledge was lost for right. 500 years because of our acceptance of Copernican, uh, heliocentric worldview. But anyways, um, let's go ahead and go into, because I think it's very important, the revelation that you just recently shared yes. with me. Yes, yeah. Uh, yeah. Because this is something that, you know, I've been criticized, condemned, yes. and judged for for a very long time. Yeah, and yeah. And so, yeah, if you would, please share. Absolutely, Zen, yeah. Um, recently, I... Uh, searched up a, uh, a term. Uh, this term is spelled in the Hebrew, He Nun Aleph Vav Resh Yod Mem Hanorim. What that translates to is the enlightened ones. Now, what that means is when you look at the word Illuminati in, in Latin, it is a translative word. And in Latin, that's what that, that's what Illuminati means. Illuminati is in a base word on its own. It's, it is a translative word. So instead of phonetically looking up this term, um, in the codes, I, I use this translative word for the enlightened ones. And, and, and that's what they, they call themselves. And, yeah. um, uh, out of all places. Now, the Tanakh, has 3,116,000 some odd letters in it, okay? The whole Tanakh. Um, over three, three quarters of a million words. Uh, this term showed up at a skip of negative 26 in chapter 3 of Genesis, where it's talking about the enmity between the seed of the serpent and the seed of the woman. Um, now anybody who listens to you or follows your research knows that this is the basis on which, on which this concept hangs. Right. Uh, uh, the garden account. It all goes back to the garden with the serpent and, and the, the beguilement of Eve. Right. The eating um, of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good. That, that's right. But he um, thinks an apple. Are, are you with me still, Zen? Yeah, I was just saying that everybody thinks that it's an apple. That's right. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, you know, it was just simply an apple or just, just a fruit, you know, a, a, right. a literal, fr- fr- a literal fruit. Uh, and it's, uh, anybody who, who spends a little time, um, researching this matter, um, Without even immediately jumping into um, believing in, in in this whole concept, they can tell that this isn't what's being taught in Sunday schools. You know, it's um, it, it's beyond that. And you know, when I first heard about this, um, very fascinated uh, with with uh, what you were sharing about this because it, it just it makes so much sense. But at the same time, for me. I've got to be a little pragmatic and Absolutely. it led me down a great journey. Um, and as, at some point, you know, I kind of started focusing on other things, but uh, now here I am, I'm, ba- I'm, we're back at this issue and it's important because, and this was a great reminder for me, um, because I, I don't want to put it down or, 
or kind of belittle, but I just, it was something I moved past because this is the kind of stuff that when people uh, first awaken to, to they, they kind of just come out of the matrix, you know what I mean? Right. They study things like Illuminati and all this stuff, and, and that's what happened to me. You know, I was engrossed and entrenched in all this stuff about now all of a sudden I was at a point in my life where, you know, government, world powers, new history, world order, new world order, all this stuff, you know, as a, as a just kind of a, somebody who was coming out of adolescence and into adulthood. And I've always just personally, I've always just been a big kid anyways. You know, I never really cared about any of this stuff. You know, I just wanted to do right. my thing, you know. Yes. Now, all of a sudden, I've always been a believer. Um, and when I got to the point where, you know, the Most High spoke to me and I knew that we were part of this fig tree generation and we're at the time of the end, all of a sudden it really mattered. So I kind of dove into these things. And um, when you, like I said, when you first wake up, you know, you, you really – get fascinated with this stuff and um this 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 particular code um it 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 brought me back you know it's brought me back to a rudimentary awakening topics and um you know so like I, i was saying about this particular code it's um anybody who's you can anybody can pick up a a tanakh and find it there it's been preserved in the text for over 3,500 years then, uh, right. they, Moses didn't know about the Illuminati. Right. You know, it, it can't be there by accident. Uh, there's there's over, like I said, there's over 3,116,000 letters in the Tanakh. And for, for that, within a range of 26 letters to end up there in Genesis, it's not by accident. We just... Um, me and me and Chris, um, we just ran the um, statistical data on that code, and it's like the probability was like point zero 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 two two. That 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 is just there by randomness. Um, mm-hmm. They call that probability value. Um, you know, the statistical stuff. I'm I'm kind of now just catching on to and trying to learn because it, it's it's important. You know, you don't have to fully understand it to be a researcher. You could, you know, as long as you're adept in Hebrew and you can learn the Hebrew, you can you can get a pretty decent start. You know, you've got your training wheels then, but you do have to learn the Hebrew because things like phonetics and other things like that play a big factor. Because if if I'm wrong by one letter, it will throw your results completely off. So I sometimes when I look up a word, I'll spend a lot of time making sure that the spelling is correct and I cross reference everything. I'll look it up in the Tanakh. I'll look it up on a translator. Uh, I'll cross cross reference everything five, six times over just to be sure. There is no doubt that that translation is what it is then. And it's not there by accident. Can you share where it was discovered as well? Because I think that's very important. Yes. It's, you can find that, that term at a skip of negative 26 between Verses 12 and 15 in the third chapter of Genesis. And when I say negative, what that means is when you find a term, you're either going to find it in a positive or negative fashion. Negative means it's going backwards. It doesn't make it any less significant because Hebrew goes from right to left, the opposite of English. So if it was in a positive fashion, it would be going the way it's written from right to left. When, it, when you find a code in negative at a negative skip, it's, it's simple. It's just going the other direction. The code okay. is still there at an equidistant sequence, but it's there. It is there. And, and really, in a lot of cases, it even makes it more profound because it's, it's showing you that it's there on purpose. It, it stands out, you know. Um, and Let me uh, make one comment here, too, because I sure, think sure. this is – relevant as well we see that with regard to the languages that all of the countries that are to the right of jerusalem they write from right to left yeah yeah pointing to jerusalem and then those that are on uh, that right from left to right are on the left side of jerusalem Uh, but what is interesting about this 
to me, we know that the Illuminati, mm-hmm. um, they are not the, you know, they don't follow the narrow way. They no. follow the broad path of destruction. Yes. And yes. they are considered to be those of the left hand path. Yes. Of the left hand path. So it would make sense to me that you would find this code in the negative, uh, because it shows, you know, they are the, those of the left hand path and, mm-hmm. uh, and that even in the separation of paradise, the wicked, uh, describes that, uh, even with the goat and the sheep, that they are those of the left hand, uh, and that the righteous are considered to be on the right, uh, and, right. you know, those that follow the, the narrow way. And right. so, yeah, if you would, please continue. The children of promise. That's right. Right. And then you have the, the sons of Cain who are twice the children of hell. Right. Um, um, so I, when you, when you see something like this, it's, you're not, and you're not looking at something that's hundreds of letters apart. You're looking at something that's just a few letters apart that you can count by hand in an area where, you know, if this showed up in, you know, judges or, or, uh, exactly, yes. or chronicles or, you know, uh, you know, I would have to dismiss it or depending, now depending. But for this to appear in Genesis chapter 3, I then when I saw this, I about fell out of my chair. <laughs> I bet. And I, I immediately thought of you, brother. I was right. like, I got it. I have to get this to Zen. I have, I have to show this to him. So moving on from there. Um, oh, but really quick, Genesis 3.15, for those that don't know, Mm-hmm. It is the prophecy encoded into the scripture which speaks about Yeshua and how when he comes and into the flesh and dies on the cross that he, he will crush the head of the serpent. Crush the head of the serpent. Yes. At the same time that the serpent would be nipping at his heel. And so Genesis 3.15 says, And I will put enmity between mm-hmm. thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed, it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Well, what people don't realize is that when Daniel slaughtered or killed Goliath, uh, stunned him with a, a stone, and then ran up to him and used his own sword mm-hmm. to cut his head off, mm-hmm. he took his head back to the people to parade him and to show the people of Israel that he had killed the Philistine champion, mm-hmm. uh, which who was a Nephilim, that he was a six-fingered, six-toed giant. And then um, after this display, and then when, you know, the head began to rot, he buried it there at Golgotha, which means Goliath of Gath. And so burying it there at Golgotha, which came to be known as the Hill of the Skull, or right. the place known as Calvary, that when Yeshua was crucified, Yehushua, which means salvation in the Hebrew. Right. Um, when he was crucified on the cross, that prophecy in Genesis 3.15 was fulfilled in that he was crushing the head of the serpent seed at the same time that it nipped at his heel. And so this being, you know, the oldest prophecy in, in the Pentateuch, uh, it also connects again to Christ being the seed of the woman, which in Luke chapter 3, we see his genealogy, his lineage is mm-hmm. given, and that Cain is excluded from this genealogy. Right. And so, yeah, and so connecting the Illuminati or the enlightened ones, uh, as you said, the honor- honorarium, uh, I think that's what you said, but um, to connect that to Genesis 3.15 <laughs> It also goes back to and fulfills what Christ had said in John chapter 8 when he said, I know that you are Abraham's seed, but you seek to kill me because yes. my words have no place in you. I speak that which I have seen with my father and you do that which you have seen with your father, Yes, which we see that, you know, Cain and John chapter first uh, John chapter three is said to be of the wicked one. And that word of is translated um, in the Greek as descendant, child of progeny, mm-hmm. or 
seat of. And so, you know, again, this confirms, and I'll make one final statement here, and that has to do with Luke chapter 11 and also Matthew chapter 23, where he said of them, Wherefore ye be witnesses unto yourselves that ye are the children of them which killed the prophets. Fill ye up then the measure of your fathers, ye serpents, ye generation of vipers. How can ye escape the damnation of hell? And then he says of them, uh, Wherefore, behold, I send you un- send unto you prophets and wise men and scribes, and some of them you shall kill and crucify, and some of them shall ye scourge in your synagogues and persecute them from city to city that upon you may come all the righteous blood shed upon the earth from the blood of righteous Abel unto the blood of Zacharias, son of Barachias, whom ye slew between the temple and the altar. So he connects the Pharisees who were conspiring his murder, and who he says, ye are of your father the devil, to Cain, who was the murderer of Abel, and to also to the those that had killed Zacharias, who was the father of John the Baptist, and they killed him in the Holy of Holies. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, undeniable that the Pharisees and the uh, seed of the serpent, those speaking spoken of as, you know, that would be at enmity with the children of Adam, the sons of Adam, uh, that they are of Cain's bloodline. And your Bible Mm -hmm. code, the discovery of it, absolutely confirms it. It, it does. It does. And as a matter of fact, today I ran the same term in the Peshitta because we are now coding in the Aramaic Peshitta, which is another. Uh, it's this is huge because what's interesting is is we're we're getting strong results in, encoded in the Aramaic using Hebraic words. Right. We're also finding that we're finding that the Aramaic is embedded with Hebrew language. Yeah, and we feel as this is, was done with 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 purpose. Um, Absolutely, they are um, without a doubt connected. Um, and that term did come up talking about Pharisees and scribes. Nice, but but when you go back to to the to the to the term that we're talking about to this particular code, for anybody who wants to look, if you go to Genesis chapter three and verse twelve, and you go into the sixth word, which is Omdi, uh, and start at the Mem and just start counting 26 letters towards the right until you get to chapter 15, you'll find this word, this Hanorim, which means the enlightened ones. And, and it's just, it is just, it is so impossibly just small that it's just there by chance. It's, it's not there by chance. impossible, yes. So what, what I did was, I was, I was, you know, thinking and, and I was, you know, pondering this after I saw this, just in complete shock and awe. And I'm like, well, you know, it shouldn't surprise me. Right. If me as somebody who believes in this research, if I just was doing this, I wouldn't spend this much time doing this if I was just still looking for more proof. I, right. I mean, I know this, this, this is what it is. I mean, yes. Yeah. You know, hey, hold so. on, brother. We're we're at break. Oh, okay. We'll okay, be right back, go. everybody, for a second yeah. hour. Okay. Uh, as of yet, I don't personally have my own platform. It's something I, I look forward to doing very soon. But uh, you, you can get a hold of me through the Code Searchers, uh, CodeSearcher dot com. Uh, feel free to look uh, him up online or on or on YouTube. Uh, feel free for anybody. Uh, get, get a, you can get a hold of me on Facebook. Just simply look up my name, Scott Bunnell. B-U-N-N-E-L-L, and uh, I'd be glad to, to speak to anybody who, who has any questions regarding uh, what we've spoken about or, or anything, you know, uh, regarding uh, uh, the Bible codes or, or anything. If you just want to chat or, or what have you, uh, send me a message. If you send me a request, a friend request, I do ask that you just send me a message to let me know uh, what it's in regards to, and uh, I'll gladly speak to anybody. Um, what, so. if, uh, what if somebody was interested in beginning the study of the Bible codes 
uh, yes. may not be yet familiar with Hebrew, but you know, have the desire to learn like yourself. Right. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Come to the site of Code Searcher. Um, Jonathan would set up an interview with you and, and speak to you because uh, the, the, the biblical Hebrew is something that you can come into the course and study Hebrew exclusively. If you have, um, if you're not interested in doing the codes, but would like to still participate, um, you can come in and learn Hebrew and still be a part of the class because we have several students there who, who are part of the course who they're not necessarily searching codes, but they offer something because they, they're there and they're learning and um, being guided in the spirit, they have something to, to bring to the table. Um, we, we have several students who, who are there who, like, who, are, who, do, who do just that. You know, they're there to, to bring input. Um, everybody has something to bring to the table. It's, it's, a, it's, a, very, it's a great group. Um, we're very diverse. Um, we have people who believe in um, flat earth. We have people who don't. We have people who, you know, um, have different ideas about different things. It's a very diverse group. It's not a cult mentality where somebody is lording over you with their opinions and, and you know, this is how it has to be. Um, so we're a very diverse and loose group. Now, we all do have – we all do come into court on certain things, um, but it's not laid down like this is the law and – and I mean, obviously, we're all believers in Yeshua, and, and we believe in the Torah, and you know, we believe in the biblical feasts. We do. We would hope that somebody into, coming into the um, course would at least be on the same page there. Um, we definitely don't shun anybody, but you know, those are pretty important uh, prerequisites, you know. Um, yeah. But but we don't try to lord over anybody with a you know a cult kind of mentality where you're forced to, to, you know, see it our way in these other kind of, you know, fringe topics or, or anything, you know, it's a very, very comfortable, diverse group. Um, and, and you don't have to come in and have to learn the codes. It's just, it's available. Like I said, it's, it's a multifaceted, uh, group. Uh, it's a beautiful thing. Um, and I would just welcome anybody who's interested to go. And I would definitely welcome everyone. If it's something you're not interested in, but you're interested in the material, at least come to Code Searcher or Bible Code Theory Research to, to their platforms on YouTube and, and while, while YouTube is still up and going and, and check out the content. And, and you'll see um, the material that's, that's and the revelations that are being brought forth because um, I'll be there sharing things. And, and like I said, I do plan on starting my own platform and I'll, I will definitely make that known when that happens then. Um, and I'll be sharing stuff on my Facebook. So, so yeah. Um, have you said that, and I know that you guys know the truth as far as the calendar and the cosmology. Um, and I was wondering, have you discovered any codes in connection with, uh, with cosmology? Yeah. You know, personally, I haven't then, um, it hasn't been hasn't been something that's been on the forefront of research. Uh, it's something that I can make a point to do. Yeah. Um, it, we, we try not to we try not to bring it up in the group so much as far as topic because uh, although we agree to disagree in that group, it becomes a an issue where. It's 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 not argumentative, but it's you know it just hasn't really come up in the codes. And it's you know it's something I you know I I will I will because we're we're fair with each other um, when it comes to that. But it just for some reason it just hasn't come up. And I myself personally, you know. I, I will look. Um, I, I will look into it. Um, it's something that I haven't coded out because it just hasn't the direction. I, it's not the direction I've been led in, Zen, you know, yeah, yeah. Um, as of yet, as of yet. Um, but with with this here, um, with this topic here, it's 
uh, I'm just completely blown away. And there's there's another part to this um, which I haven't yeah, uh, yeah. which I haven't uh, brought up yet because there's another code that came up um, uh, when I started to to speak about this before a commercial break. Um, I thought, well, why don't I look up Seed of the Serpent? Um, and this is a uh, a two word term in the Hebrew. Um, it is uh, Zara Hanakash, uh, Zadi Resh Ayin, which is the seed, He Nun Het uh, Shin, which is the Nakash. It's seven letters all together. When I put the term into the program, it came up in Genesis chapter 2, starting right around verse 20. Let me pull up the picture here and look at it. Yes, the first letter, the Zion, appears in Genesis 2.20, which is um, Adam gave all the names to all the cattle and, all to, and to all the fowl of the air, to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found to help me for him. The very last letter, which is a shin, the last letter in the word nakash, is uh, Genesis six chap uh, Genesis chapter six verse four of all places. Um, it, absolutely. So there's a very strong connection. Absolutely, uh, so and, cool. And what makes this even more profound now? This will appear within a range of um, uh, 183. If I go now with these programs, what I can do, and I can do this by hand on paper, but it would take a while. I can go and manually set my page width at any number I want. So if I want to set my page width at 183 letters, um, w which I did, um, uh, then that, that means that if I start in Genesis and start writing by hand the, every letter into Genesis, letter for letter, and if I go to 183, and I can pick any number, but this just happened to be 183, and I start all over and I start another row, 183, right? Um, I could see, I'll see the term come up. Um, and this term, seed of the serpent, appears with this other term that we were talking about earlier, the, the enlightened ones, the Illuminati, this Hanorim, uh -huh. they appear together in close proximity on the screen. They're not That's in opposing cool. parts of the, of the text. It's, you don't have one. Now, sometimes you'll have really long codes that are in different parts of the text that will, they'll come together on a screen based on the axis term. But to have these two terms come together in such a small range of text, this makes right. this, I mean, just to have that first term appear in Genesis 3 and just to have this term. Now, this term here, the seed of the serpent, it's at an EDLS of 730. That is still small because it's seven letters. The more letters you have in a term, the more likely you're going to see it come up at a larger skip. 730, um, at a skip of 730 characters, that is really small for a seven character term and for it to appear alongside the other term in the same field of, in the same range of text, it's absolutely mind blowing. Zen. there is no doubt in my mind that I can go from being pragmatic to back to being a believer in this again, because as a, as a devoted researcher and as somebody who knows what to look for, this is, it is beyond impossible times 10. Right. It, it is. It's just, it is, it's beyond uncanny. It's just, it, to me, this is, it's evident. It's evident. And we're going to move on to something else, um, which kind of connects this and kind of reconciles maybe things for, you know, who's who and who and what's what. Um, one of the things that we, 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 we touched on, um, last year in, in probably the later part of the year. Uh, and recently, um, uh, there's a person of interest, okay? Uh, <clears throat> somebody we've been looking at and talking about and very strong in the codes. Um, somebody who's very uh, high in political power, 
somebody who's very influential, very rich and powerful, um, directly connected to the president. And like I said, let's just say he's a person of interest. Uh-huh. His name's his name's Jared Kushner, okay? Uh-huh. Um The son in law. The son in law. Um right now he's in the middle of hashing out this big peace plan. Right. Um for anybody who's following along, they've they've rolled out the first portion of this plan. Um this uh, the economic portion. Um they're gonna be annexing land. They've already done so. Um um Area C, which is the Temple Mount. Uh, this is very loud for anybody who follows Bible prophecy and we're not, we're not going to call any shots, but it's uh, for, for in the codes and, um, reflective upon what's taking place prophetically, you know, it's, um, there's a big indication that he is a person of interest Uh because, if you go to Daniel chapter 11, I'm going to pull it up here in my inner interlinear here, verse 21. Okay, it says, And in his estate shall stand up a vile person to whom they shall not give the honor of the kingdom, but he shall come in peaceably and obtain the kingdom by flatteries. Verse 22, And with the arms of a flood shall they be overflown from before him, and, and shall be broken, yea, also the prince of the covenant. Now, if you take a Hebrew Tanakh and you back up to verse 21 and you go to one of these last words here in, in 21, I think it's this word here. I don't have the diagram in front of me. I should know this by the, like the back of my hand, considering I'm the one who found it. Uh, let's see here. Let me pull it up. Actually, let me pull it up on my phone. I have it here on my phone. There it is. Okay, there it is. I want to be able to be. Ex- I want to. I want to be exact with this. Yeah. The last uh, word. The last word. Flatteries. It's the very last word in in verse 21, and in it trails into the um, the next verse, 22. And when you see it at an ELS of 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, every seven letters in these two verses, it will appear right next to the Prince of the Covenant in the plain text, the name of Jared Kushner. Mm, okay. Um, when, when I... <laughs> When I came upon this, I I had to stand up and shut my laptop and take a few deep breaths. And I yeah. got a hold of I got a hold of Jonathan. I got a hold of uh, our fellow researcher Chris over at Bible Code Theory Research, and we got together and we we did a video. Um, you guys can go to um, Jonathan's channel over at Code Searcher, and um, I had done a table about the Blood Moon. And it was right around January 21st. And his name appeared in that table. And Chris and myself, we got together and we, uh, we, um, we put focus on, on, on him. And we started seeing his name come up in some very significant areas. One of which happens to be on the same table we were just talking about in Genesis. Because if you go to the field of text where the Illuminati and the seed of the serpent come in, you will find Genesis in Genesis chapter four, verse 15. You're familiar with this then. Yes. And Yahuwah said unto him, whoever so slayeth Cain, vengeance shall be taken upon him sevenfold. And Yahuwah set a mark upon Cain, lest any finding him should kill him. Now, where it says Mark of Cain, that word uh, Cain, Cain's name is spelled uh, Kuf Ayin Nun. The, the Kuf in, in the name of Cain, you will find encoded the name of Kushner. Now, he's attached to the Prince of the Covenant in Daniel, 
and he's attached to the mark of Cain. Now, that raises some serious interest um, for me as a researcher, and it should raise the interest of anybody just kind of listening in and watching um, that uh, is somebody to look out for. Uh, I'm not going to come out and say he's the Antichrist. Uh, I'm not going to come out and start saying things and uh, like that. But is he um, a person of interest in prophetic fulfillment? I'm willing to bet so. Absolutely. And I'm going to uh, go, yeah. go out on a limb, you know, and, and yeah. say that. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think this is very relevant. And uh, some other things that people might not know about or be aware of, and that has to do with the – um, the fig tree generation and also the um, the jubilee that yes. the jubilee is connected to that Jerusalem in 1967 mm -hmm. and also to 2017 and also the Revelation 12 the sign of the woman right. with the sun uh, with the moon beneath her feet a child within her womb and a crown of twelve stars that right. Trump his even his name you know, yes. Trump is, is connected to the last Trump, um, yes. and yes. and also that he announced and acknowledged <laughs> Jerusalem as being the capital mm -hmm. of Israel on mm -hmm. what was the 70th anniversary of the blooming of the fig tree, May 14th, um, and so you know, which in 1948, that's when Israel was announced as a nation, which was the blooming of the fig tree, in my opinion. And so we have the acknowledgement by Trump that Jerusalem is the capital of the Jewish nation um, 70 years later. And so all of these things, in my opinion, are prophetic and that the Bible code that you found with Kushner is yeah. his son-in-law that we know that he is pushing for peace between the Palestinians and the Israel, yes. uh, Israel Israelites. And right. that this would also, you know, lead to what is the coming of the Antichrist because he will break that covenant. Right. And so, yeah, this is all part right. of Bible prophecy. And yes. also, you know, again, Kushner being connected to uh, the seed of the serpent. Mm -hmm. I mean, come on. We know that um, Donald Trump is cousins with Hillary Clinton and that the Clintons are connected to the Rothschilds and also, yes. um, you know, to the, the family there in, in the royal family in England. And they are all seed of the serpent. That's right. They are bloodline uh, of Cain. And so, and they're all, you know, all the presidents, even Obama, is bloodline connected to this family. Mm -hmm. And this is, you know, not anything that is hidden. It's mainstream news. A, That's right. A 12-year-old little girl did a, you know, a whole summer assignment on that and discovered that all these bloodline uh, presidents are connected to the royals, to yeah. you know, Queen Elizabeth and all that. Yeah. Um, yeah, so let me turn it back over to you. I just wanted to bring that for you. Uh, yeah, go on if you need to, Zen. I mean, I don't, you know, want to hog your whole show here, but. No, uh, no, please, huh? Yeah, this I, is all important stuff, so. I, I'm glad you brought up the Jubilee because this is something else that's been a, a primary um, focus on our, in our research. Uh, reconciling the Jubilee cycle. Mm -hmm. There are people in our own group who, you know. We don't see eye to eye, and we don't have to on it, on the exact timing of the Jubilee, but because when you look at prophecy and when you look at the historical record, there's there's some discrepancies that take place when you look at certain things. But when you look at the Jubilee and you consider the the popular accepted notion that it's it falls on the cycle of the years 17 and 67 every century. Um, there's been a little bit of back and forth with some of us with that, but as a code researcher, and when you look at the things that have taken place in those years, it makes sense and it, it, it becomes evident. 
We've seen very strong evidence of that in the codes. For anybody who's interested in seeing that, they can come to our platforms and look. Um, and we, this is something that's been the primary focus recently in our research. And, and it's a very big connection to what's going on prophetically because when you consider the fact that they've declared a jubilee and not have followed up with Leviticus 25, that brings repercussions from the Most High. Mm-hmm. He's not happy about this. Right. You know, being under a slave system of welfare and not giving back land, and not only not giving back land, but taking more of it. Mm-hmm. And what are you supposed to do? What are we supposed to be doing in a jubilee? We're supposed to be freeing slaves. We're right. supposed to be forgiving debt. We're supposed yeah. to be giving back land. And right, returning it done. to the rightful owner, right? Yeah. yeah, and so essentially what they did is I really feel that they've – we've provoked prophetically what's taking place by well, – well, not us, but those in power mm-hmm. and the religious leaders and stuff, whatever. They've – if they were going to declare a jubilee, they should have followed up with what we're supposed to do for a jubilee and mm-hmm. give the people back their their land and forgive their debts and wipe everything clean and start a new slate, which yeah. which the Most High will do. Right. You will, you will do. There's the jubilee. There's the part of it for the righteous and the part of it for the unrighteous. Right. And, you know, the the instance with, with the – the Revelation 12 that you talked about with the sign, that was a clear sign. Yeah, absolutely. And that was, out. and and the Jubilee Zen plays a very big role in this. Right. Um, oh, yeah, absolutely. It does. It does because it, it hasn't been followed up through with. And, right. And, and it's, it's, it's part of the, the, the judgment. Um, of course, you know, um, a wicked generation, not, um, following along with the Ten Commandments that have been laid out. Very simple. Very mm-hmm. simple. We're not talking about, you know, burning yourselves with 613 mitzvot. We're talking about simple, wholesome uh, rules to live by uh, that are laid out, given to us as a covenant, as an everlasting covenant. You know, and when we talk about Torah and stuff like that, people get it bent out of shape. But listen, we inherit, we already know as as children of the Most High inherently in our spirit that this is how we should live. You know, we should love our our neighbors as ourselves. We should honor yeah. our mother, or our father. You know, yeah. we should not slander his name, and we should regard it highly. Um, we should take a day off and rest. Is that so hard right. to ask? But no, we, we're living in a generation now where it, we're, we're, we, we have a, 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 a generation of, of young ones now who, uh, who slander their parents, who, who, you know, this is the point that it's gotten to. Yes. And so repercussions come with that. Right. And here we are. The fig tree is about to drop its fruit. Yes, yes. You know, yes. It, and for anybody following prophecy, it's, it's, you can plainly see that this is all coming together very fast and and as a result you've got faithful believers who they're receiving the outpouring of the spirit and you've got people like myself and others who are coming into these revelations because like i was telling you before the broadcast then to my own devices sitting here i have no idea how i'm able to receive this information and convey it to you and learn hebrew at an exponential rate and and it's like a download almost. I, I don't get a Zen. I, I failed Spanish in high school, <laughs> you know, and here I am absorbing this this Hebrew. I, I just don't get a Zen. I mean, I don't question it and I don't fight it and I'm grateful for it and I'm very humbled by it. But yeah, absolutely. You know what, what I mean? Blessing. It's it's very it's a it's a clear just a, as a personal testimony. It's a very clear sign of, of where we're, we're at. You know, it's it's very powerful stuff, and it's taking place with a lot of people. You know, Dr. Pigeon talks about epigenetic memory and how people, the, you know, with this Ephraim awakening, the the um, the, the curse um, which ended where Ezekiel was told to to lay on his side, right, and bear the iniquity of of the house of Israel. Yeah. Which, when you calculate that, ended very not too long ago. Right. Some of us calculate that to be right around the time of. 2009, 2008, 
2010 because when you count the number of days he was he was told to lay on his side and 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 factor in the 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 year the um seven like like you do like 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 the like the prophecy in Daniel is molded where every day is actually like seven years weeks of years the weeks of years right it comes out to roughly that time period and coincidentally enough that's when a lot of people started waking up you know a lot of yeah. people woke up back in 2001 when the world trade happened you, right. you know um so um yeah this is where we're at brother yeah absolutely uh rob talks about that in his yeah. work as well yeah and so yeah. Yeah, most certainly. Um, and there's a, a passage in Jubilees that talks about how even Abraham was restored given knowledge of, um, mm-hmm. of, of Hebrew and, you mm-hmm. know, and to be able to read the language of his fathers. Uh, yes. but I wanted to make mention really quickly that, you know, I, I had a, a great interest in the Bible codes and, there used to be a website called BibleCodeWisdom.com mm. that allowed people to search out Bible codes in English. That oh. uh, they ran really? it all together in English, and yeah, and the Bible codes worked um, in the English as well in different manners. Yeah, and but wow. that website is is down now. But uh, when okay. it, we had access to it, I actually had searched for. Um, a couple of codes which I'll share with you. Um, and I put all of this in two of my books, um, Skyfall, Angels of Destiny, and The Enmity Between the Seed Lines, The Great Contest too. And I included all the screenshots of that particular Oh, cool. Book. Yeah, but the keywords that I actually searched for and not only was there one matrix, but there was actually seven different matrices, which mm-hmm. we know that seven is the number of God. But the mm-hmm. code that I found in which people can go to uh, my books and then look and get confirmation of this, the keywords were goat, which we know that, you know, Cain is considered uh, a yeah. goat, a tear. Yeah. Uh, goat, Esau, Cain. Devil, sun, seed, fruit, tree, and yeah. tear. And wow. all of these words were found in seven different matrices. Wow. Uh, and interestingly enough, the first matrix was in Genesis. Yeah. And the um, Genesis chapter 3, um, verse 6. And it went all the way to the seventh matrix was found in Ephesians chapter six. And wow. so well, I shared all of these things and people can go to find that. And you used to be able to, you know, seek it out and search it out for yourself. But like I said, that, that, um, that, that, that kind of interests me because, business. you know, they, they, uh, Brendan McKay, who's somebody who's a, a staunch critic of codes, came out and did what's called monkey texts in, in other languages and other books mm-hmm. and, and did manage to get some varied, scattered results. But compared to the Hebrew, um, you know, I'm interested to see what you what you have there. And I'll look it up because you you can get results in, in English. And they even have a program, that I think, that does it in Greek. I think the program that I use even has a Greek um installments hmm. but i've never looked because it's widely known um even amongst the um the uh the rabbis that do this that the most potent results are in the hebrew yes i, um, I fully agree you you'll get stronger results in the hebrew and to take it even a step further you get your most you you get more potent results in the torah Mm-hmm, now right. that doesn't mean that the the rest of the Tanakh isn't um, profoundly encoded equally because it is. 
Mm-hmm. It is very profound in, in its results. Um, I, I, uh, it's almost unfair to say that one is more than the other because in the prophets, when you look in individual books, um, when you look at certain verses, you'll see things that are just, just as mind blowing as you'll find in the Torah. But the Torah, there's something very special about the Torah because yeah. you'll, you, you, you'll, you'll, you'll get to a, I'll be working on a certain table and I'll see a lot, uh, a lot of, um, uh, relevant, uh, terms, a lot of, um, terms that come together in pro- close proximity, like the Twin Towers Code. That's a great example. Yes. Uh-huh. Um, you can print the whole Torah out and it'll come out blank. And then when you get to, I think it's in numbers, um, you'll, you'll find, the date, the month and the day, uh, n- near the year, near the word plain, towers, and in the plain text, it'll say 3,000 fell that day. And I think that's the account when he, right. he, he came down the mountain and... Right, uh, yes. Now, th- that's that's not a coincidence. It is not a coincidence, you know. Right. This is a good, a very good example. It's a very, very um, famous code that was done by, um, I believe it was Eliyahu Rips, who is one of your probably most well-known Bible code researchers out there, uh, is Professor Rips. Um, there's a small group of them that have uh, put out a series of codes that are like, you know, if you're a coder, if you're a researcher, you're going to look at codes by Art Levitt, by uh, Grant Jeffries, by Eliyahu Rips, um, Glazerson. Now, even though we don't agree with their theology and, you know, not followers of Yeshua, it doesn't mean we don't regard their research. Right. You know, and it's our prayer that at least one out of that group will come to Yeshua. Yeah. You know. Uh, because we represent Especially if they're the, interested in the codes, because it's encoded into the into huh? the Bible. Uh, especially if they're interested in the codes. Well, yes. I mean, these are like the main guys of, of code right. research. Because it's in about. the codes as well that Yeshua is Savior Messiah. Yes, yes. And, you know, people are, they're just, there's some people who just are firmly where they believe in their beliefs. Right. You know, and right. if, and, but you know, if at least, if at least one person will make that confession of faith, then, then that's enough, you know, and that's enough. If, you know, if somebody's gone, now you've got people out there that are just winning souls for, for Yeshua, and that's, you know, uh, crowds of people, and that's great. But if you can at least, if one person, if you can just manage to bring one person into the kingdom, then, then, then that's, that's enough, you know. Mm-hmm. At least one has come, you know, and that's right. that's our that's our prayer for them, you know, and it's our prayer that you know they they'll regard our research as well because um, because we're believers in Yeshua, obviously they 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 don't, right? You know, and there's an, there's there's um we're 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 at odds because of that, and it, and it's you know it, it kind of it kind of um it hurts our feelings a little bit, but you know what? Hey, we still love you. You do great research too. At the end of the day, we're still all children of of the Most High, and and um, you know, we'll just uh, we'll just keep uh, keep them all in prayer and, and see how things uh, pan out. Yes, you know, I would love to see one of those guys um, 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 open their hearts and open their eyes and and, and make that confession and and and. and you know, that's that that day will be a beautiful day, but until then, like I said, hey, we love you and we're here Praying for you. <laughs> yeah. You know, but uh um, yes. you know, uh we, we do they, they, if for uh, for anybody doing codes, they they know they're they do they do uh, good research. Uh they've they've they have presented to the world um probably some of the most valuable uh proofs of of uh the codes and and what their purpose is and and showing you know the divine hand in, in the scriptures um they've set they set a bar they set a premise and like i said although we don't um we don't uh, see eye to eye in our beliefs there we we you know their work is to be regarded um because 
uh, you know, their discoveries have, um, like I said, they've, 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 they've proven what this is all about as far as codes are concerned. Um, and, and I myself being involved now for, uh, for a little bit of time now, it's, there's, there's no doubt. And, and, and this is the purpose. Um, it's, it's, it's to show people that, you know, the scripture is divinely inspired, uh, by our heavenly father and, 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 and all of this is, it's, you know, it's all real. It's all real, you know, and if for somebody on the outside looking in, um, um, who's scientifically minded, this, it's, it, this is a good witnessing tool. And, you know, there's a lot of people who just kind of laugh at that, that are believers like, well, how's this a witnessing tool? You're like, you know, this is like, you're doing all this weird code stuff. It's like, you know, they're making comparisons. I've heard, heard somebody tell me that, well, you're eating from the wrong tree and you're using the Bible like a Ouija board. Whoa, 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 whoa back up for a second. No. This is a, a valuable witness to somebody who's who struggles uh, mentally because they're so scientifically minded that they can't see past. But when you see, when you can understand the science of what's taking place in this and, and numbers and all that, it speaks very loudly to somebody like that. Right. You know? So it, and, it, is, it is a good way to witness. Yeah. And the, the, you know, they will connect it to Ouija board only in order to detract and to try yes. to yes. condemn because that's yes. the way they always attack the messenger. Sure. And if sure. you label it with something that is a negative or heretical, then yeah. you will get people to avoid examination of it. I, I, uh, yeah. I can understand why people are Bereans about it and, and, and kind of question it, you know, and it's good to be that way about anything. But yeah, for somebody you have to, to be careful. You do, you do. But for somebody to start making just blanket statements like that, it's it's unfair because think about it. By somebody suggesting that, well, the codes are divination and you shouldn't be doing that. Okay, now you've automatically by default have implied that the Most High hasn't done this. Right. And you've automatically by default have made, have basically stated that well, the enemy has done this. Well, right. no, the enemy has not done this. And as right. a matter of fact, our Heavenly Father has done this yes. to hide hide things from the enemy. Exactly. For, for us. Right. For us. Just right. specifically for us. Yes. Because we are, as we go back, like you said, this big tree generation, um, you know, a lot of people are, they, they just kind of, they get, they freak out when they think about all this stuff. But, you know, Think about it like this too. You know, we're we're part of a very special uh, generation. It's a very exciting time. You know, so when you get fraught and you think about things maybe to come or whatever, um, think about the other side of it. You know, if, yeah. if you believe and you you one you carry the testimony of Messiah and you guard the commandments and you guard the Shabbat and you live righteously, you should be happy and you should be excited. Yeah. And again, um, you know, the statistic impossibility of mm -hmm. these kind of things being encoded into the word it shows the divine inspiration it does. that could only be applied in understanding to the most high God. There's no angel or power or Satan mm -hmm. or legion no. capable of achieving this. This, again, is the fingerprints and signature of the Most High God. And so, without a doubt, um, just like prophecy contained within the Word, it's yes. only God, the self-existent Eternal One, who knows the end from the beginning and encoded it into His Word and shared it with His prophets. It's only by uh, revelation of the Holy Spirit that these things are even possible and the accuracy, again, shows to you, because all these other holy books and all these other religions, what sets Christianity apart from all of that is prophecy and the accurate nature of prophecy, which, again, shows the inspiration of what has to be mm -hmm. the creator of us all, without yes. a doubt. 
Yes, that's that's a very good point. That yeah. is a crucial point um, because it, the enemy cannot tamper with this, right? And and um, or hide it, or alter it, or change right. it. That's right. And you know, it, it brings me back to the original point that I was talking before about you know the ephod and you know. Yes. Mm-hmm. Coming to the altar now, you can come with strange fire, but there's repercussions. And you know, unfortunately, there are people out there who, um, trying to do things like I don't know, maybe look for lottery numbers or what have you, winning stocks or something like that. Yeah, yeah personal, you know, chasing after um, greed or, or right monetary gain. Or, you know, yes, or serving other Elohim. Yeah. You know. Um, and and then there's uh you know us over here you know, we are doing our best and and seeking diligently yes and, and trying mind. yes and our best interest is to provide um our brothers and sisters everywhere with uh biblical um information that is relevant to our age and and we're not here to entertain people. Now it is, you know, it is a very niche area of research that is very interesting and, and very fun. And it's cool to talk about. And yeah, it's exciting because it's a different kind of, um, ministry and it's a different kind of witness. But at the end of the day, this is an entertainment zen. It's, it's, this is very serious stuff, you know, as it, perta- as it pertains to our, our lives and where we are at. So that's just something I want to stress to people, you know, for me, for me, you know, um, I, uh, I, well, I take it very seriously and I, I guard it, you know, I, I, I guard it with, with everything I have, you know, and, and, and because you're talking about the word of, of Elohim, you know, um, yeah. so this is sacred. You have to come into the, you have Absolutely. to treat this, you have to hold this with holy hands. Right. You know, and, and honor I, it as such. Sure. So there's been times in um, us as a group have dealt with um, other researchers and people that have come into our group like like wolves and sheep clothing and and ha- have done nothing that we haven't get, couldn't get past, but have done damage. And um, Jonathan himself and, and even me personally, I had to deal with. Um, somebody last year who, who, who kind of w- w- was spinning their, their own, own ideas and making false prophecies and, and it kind of hurt us, you know, because in the beginning I kind of, I was kind of interested in what they were doing, but I didn't know what was going on. And then all of a sudden there was an association in it, you know, and, and here we are, we're trying to do the best we can to keep it a hundred percent. So, you know, I just want to, and I say all this because I just want to reassure people that, you know, this is all done very prayerfully and, and, and seeking the spirit and everything. It's, you know, mm-hmm. so. Right on. Well, and, let me share this passage really quickly because I had, uh, I discovered it and this is what I had made mention. It's from the book of Jubilees. Um, it's chapter 12, verse 25, I believe. And it says, And Yahweh Almighty said, Open his mouth and his ears that he may hear and speak mm. with his mouth with the language which has been revealed. For it had ceased from the mouths of all the children of men from the day of the overthrow of Babel. And I opened his mouth and his ears and his lips, and I began to speak with him in Hebrew, in the tongue of the creation. And he took the books of his fathers, and these were written in Hebrew, and he transcribed them. And he began from henceforth to study them, and I made known to him that which he could not understand." And he studied them during the six rainy months. And so this is the angel speaking about yes. Abraham and how he had restored to him knowledge of how to read the ancient Hebrew. Yes. You know? 
And yes. so I feel like, you know, this is an anointing that you were also gifted with. Um, not that, you know, it just came out of nowhere for you, right. but you had to put forth struggle. Right. Uh, and if I could just add to that, Zen, Zephaniah comes to mind. Chapter 3, verse yes, 9. Yes, exactly then, right. I will turn to the At people the of day, pure language, the right. pure tongue. Right. Now, we're not being partial when we when we say that there's there's something to this Hebrew that is very powerful. I mean, yes. we're, we're talking about the – I mean, per, for me – I go out on a limb and I'll say this is the nut, nut, the very nuts and bolts in creation of creation, mm-hmm. the Absolutely very mechanical, right. the the construct of which the Most High has used, you know, and, to and the, very the creation into being. Yes, the, the very Logos, language I believe the Word of the used. Lord. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, and you've got people out there like Eric Bissell and and others, um, Teddy Williams, who are who are. Uh, a look into the OTOs and the, and the pictographic language. Yes, and, uh-huh, right. And all of this stuff just kind of uh, everybody kind of um, throwing their ingredients into the pot, and it, it just all makes sense, you know. Right. You got us, and you've got so many people, so many people who are just all of a sudden have become interested in um, learning this, and, right. um, and and it's not just for a fad. You know, it's because they really feel in their heart they belong to this. And they should because Ephraim forgot who they were. Right. You know, the Northern House, the Northern Ten Tribes, you know, that was the question for a long time. Where did they go? And when you take the exponential growth rate of 10 million people over the course of 2,000 years, consider where you play a part in that. Right. Right. You know, it's very deep. And you should feel very much a part of that. You know, at the end of the day, the blood doesn't matter as long as you've made that confession of faith. Yes, absolutely. Hey, he grafts us back into the stump. Right. But hey, consider the fact that you are very much part of that 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 wild that wild olive tree that that you know. Right. And, and yeah. it makes sense to me. It makes it's it, it it all makes very much sense to me in regards to that that issue. You know. Yes, absolutely. I would also add that as it was mentioned here that this was the language uh of the of the creation mm. that um it also speaks about in the book of jubilees that before Adam was cast out of paradise that the animals also they spoke in <laughs> yeah. Hebrew that was the language of Eden and so you know and as you said from Zephaniah that's the language we will be restored to mm-hmm. at the end of days. And so all of these things are not by chance. The fact no. that this knowledge is coming forth and then we had, we only got a couple more minutes, but we were mentioning uh, how it, our group, we gather together every Saturday, even though we know it's not the Sabbath, <laughs> but we, we read the Aramaic Targum and studied from the Targum which is the oldest version of the Hebrew Torah into a different language, Targum meaning uh, translation. Mm-hmm. And so, um, and you guys are also examining the Aramaic Peshitta, yes. which, you know, these translations, these versions predate what became the, you know, where the words were changed and altered and misconstrued in right. the Greek. And the Holy Spirit was changed from, being female to male, uh, mm-hmm. these kind of things were uh, what was you know done with the the mistranslations and like we also discovered that the word of the Lord is found written 217 times in the first five books of the Pentateuch, uh, mm-hmm. but all of that has been removed. Yes. and now you only have 11 translations of the word of the Lord, and so the relationship of Christ with the Israelites and with, um, you know, the prophets and the patriarchs of old, all of that has been removed. And so mm-hmm. people be- don't don't understand that the ancient Israelites were believers in Yeshua and right. knew him as Savior Messiah. And so right. anyways, let me give you a chance to final comment, brother. We got sure. just a minute remaining. Sure, absolutely. And it's, it's, you know, this has really all been great. 
I, I didn't I didn't realize that we would have so much to talk about. I feel like we could go on for another couple of hours. Yeah, right. Uh, but you know, um, it's, wow, this is all of this is just so incredible, you know. And uh, I would just encourage everybody to uh, to go come check us out if you're interested. You know, uh, we're a well-rounded group, and we try to cover you know everything as it pertains to. Uh, but, you know, as believers of in, in the faith, you know, uh, mm-hmm. and things that are taking place prophetically. And uh, if somebody has a particular interest or something, I mean, this isn't like, um, you know, oh, can you, you know, if somebody has something they want, you know, us to search out or whatever. And if it pertains to something that we're being let in, sure. You know, um, and if you want to be like I said, if you want to be a part of the group, is it, if you think this is something for you. Um, come talk to us, um, because, uh, we need, we need help. I mean, I, you know, I heard Jonathan say that when I first came around and and it didn't make sense to me. Like, like you guys are like the who's who, you know, how could you guys need help? You guys, you got it covered. Like, I don't, how am I supposed to do this? And Zen, this is so vast. Um, the code, when it comes to the codes, the, the, the Tanakh, the, the word itself, it is it is a vast, endless ocean of information. Yeah. Like I, I have I to could... leave it there, brother. Okay, very We're good. We're off man. there. Uh, God bless everyone. You too, brother. We'll talk to you again soon. Shalom. All right, shalom. Good night, all.